This is the episode 7 and today we are covering website navbar in UI design and to understand this topic or this UI element you must know about buttons pixel grid system column grid system and the mobile navbar i have already created videos about all these four topics link is in the description go watch these videos first otherwise you will not be able to understand few things in this now the website navbar is actually very different from mobile bottom navbar because in mobile navbar the rules were pretty simple you just have a one icon one label and you can add maximum five elements and minimum three elements it was very simple to create a mobile navbar but but in the website navbar things are very different like you have to create three versions of the same navbar like the pc version or the large screen version and second one for the tablet and, and third one for the mobile version let me show you as some example of website navbar like we have the youtube navbar here on the left we have the menu icon or the navigation rail icon like the side navbar option we call that thing navigation rail then we have the youtube premium logo then we have the search bar in the center and we have the voice search option here then we have some options like upload video notification and profile and in the mobile version or sorry in the tablet version they have decreased the search bar size and it's very important that we decrease the search bar size in majority of the cases when we decrease the screen size we decrease the search bar size also like if they have done here and in the mobile version we decrease the number of elements or we reduce them like like here they have reduced the search bar to the search icon when you will click on it it will take you to another page here we have the voice search button and they have also reduced the voice search button you can see that here we have a filled color here you can see the separation between the background and the fill color but they have placed a simple icon here then we have all other options here but if there are so many options you can place that thing inside a menu i will show you an example of that thing let's look at google play here we have the google photos sorry google photos logo then we have the search bar then we have the upload button then we have the help settings and more apps and profile and in the tablet version they have reduced the search bar and they have also reduced the upload button they have removed the label from that thing and one very important thing is touch area like your touch area should be minimum 48 pixels if you just look at all of these things like this is the outline i draw it's not in the design of google photos navbar if you just look at the icon it's 24 by 24 pixels but if you look at the touch area it's 48 by 48 pixels we do this thing to increase the usability of our navbar and it will be very easy for the user to click on this thing otherwise the user will be required to place his mouse cursor here exactly on the icon here okay but if the touch area is big enough he can touch anywhere like i can place my mouse here and it will still work and the minimum gap between two elements is eight pixels like we have a gap in the touch area here okay and in the mobile version they have reduced the number of icons like they have just placed search bar and the upload button here they have moved every other option in the menu okay let me show you some live example of navbar like here we have the youtube button here you can see that when you will shrink this navbar the search bar size will change you can see that search bar size is changing and they have placed all the options inside the menu you can click here you will see the options here although you can show some options outside the menu but if you have a large number of icons or options then i will recommend you to move them to a menu that will be easy for the user otherwise user will get confused and it will look very cluttered now next we have is the figma navbar if you just now if i resize it the options will be hidden and they have also reduced the font sorry the logo size here you can see that let me show you again they have reduced the logo size here okay and they have moved all the options in the menu although you can show options in the tablet version of that website but they moved all the options in the menu like here you can see that okay and one more important thing you should always show the primary action of uh, your website like in this case we have a getting started button or a sign up button here so it's very important that you always show your primary action in the navbar you should never hide it next we have is the behance uh, navbar let me show you if i just resize it they have some options here on the top like if i resize it they first reduce the logo size and then they will hide the option in the menu you can see that if i click here they have hidden the options in the menu okay now in the case of behance they hide the login sign up button in the mobile and tablet version there has to be a reason why they remove the login sign up button in the tablet and the mobile version but if you are designing you should always show the login sign up button if it's a primary action for your website now the thing i told you about touch area the minimum touch area should be 48 pixels now to check the touch area of any ui element or any element what you can do is you can download this plugin or extension for chrome or any other browser although it will not work on safari or if you are on mac otherwise it will work in every other browser link is in the description go check that if you just click on it it will outline every single element on the screen now if i go close to this store option you can see that i have not touched the store but it will still get activated you can see that it's on however it's changed the color similarly on the mac option you can see that they will change it to mac 
okay like i can click here although it's very far away from the text but it it can be easily touched now imagine if they only enable the option to touch on the text exactly then it will have been very hard for the user to click on that so you should always engage the touch area and there is one other plugin i want to show you like it's what font with the help of this font you can see the font size of any text on the screen like click here it will show you all the properties of that font like they are using sf pro text uh, size is 14 pixels line at 20 pixels then we have the color and next thing we have is the size and spacing of a nav bar now in the mobile nav bar version we have a fixed size we can use 56 pixels as a standard size but in the website nav bar it, there is no fixed size or spacing it's up to you and your requirements like you can use 56 pixels 50 pixels 88 pixels or 100 pixels it will not affect the design because we have a lot of space in the website version now to look at the size and dimensions of different uh, nav bar we, what you can do is you can download this plugin or extension just click here and it will show you the dimensions of all the elements we have like you can hover over the search bar it will show you the dimension of the nav bar, sorry search bar okay similarly if i hover over here it will show me the dimensions of that icon similarly i can see the nav bar height like they are using 103 pixels although this nav bar is actually very big because it also contains that tab but the actual nav bar height is actually very less if i just go on the upside the padding from the top is 8 pixels so i'm imagining the padding from the bottom will be 8 pixels and the search bar size is 38 pixels so 38 plus 16 so the nav bar height is 56 pixels and when you are designing your nav bar in figma always design your nav bar with constraints let me show you although this is not a figma course i'm just telling you a basics you have to design your navbar with the help of proper components auto layout and variants and the proper use of constraints i will be showing you how to use constraints a very basic overview imagine this is your navbar and this is your button like imagine this is your button now if i resize it it will not move it from position it will stay there now to fix this thing what we will do is let me undo first we will change its constraints you see this two dotted line here now this is showing that where the button is actually pinned it's pinned on the left and the top okay so if i resize it from the left side it will move with the left side of the design and if i move it from the top it will move with the top side of the design let me undo it now if i select it and make sure that your button is inside the nav bar container like it's the frame and you should always use frames to create your all design elements like if i if this was the actual button i will draw a frame for that thing and i will create a button with that let me change the fill color okay now we will change its constraints do you see this option here this is called constraints we will choose right and center option and you can change the option from drop down also now you can see that we have a dotted line on the right side and on the center and if i choose right and left both then it will show the constraint on both left and right side okay but i want right so i will choose right now if i resize it it will move with the right edge because constraint pinned the button on the right side and imagine if there was text in the middle like label you can let me copy it copy it again select all of them go to the tidy up option and hold down shift to center align them okay now to center align them you have to simply click here and it will be center aligned and if you want an element to stretch with the nav bar what you can do is let me delete all of these like imagine this is your search bar okay and i want it to stretch or change with the nav bar i will choose both right and left option like and simply hold down shift and click then it will select both the elements like if i now resize it it will change its size with the nav bar okay and there are actually two options for changing the size first one is actually the left right option and second one we have is the scale now if i select scale it will scale proportionally now what i mean by proportionally let me further let me separate the left right constraint let's choose left and right now if i resize it you can see the spacing from the left is actually 150 pix uh, 115 pixels and from the right is 372 pixels now if i resize it the spacing will remain same you can see that 372 pixels it's not changed and from the left it's same now in the scale part it's actually scaling proportionally to the nav bar now let me undo this uh, if i just look at the width it's 541 pixels now if i take the nav bar and increase its width to double for that i will press star and uh, type 2 and hit enter now we have doubled the nav bar width so the child element which contains the constraint scale it, its width will also be doubled so you can see that it's 1082 pixels let me undo it initially is it was 541 pixels if you double it you will get it 1082 pixels okay so these were some basic things you should keep in mind while designing a nav bar and there is one more thing i forgot to tell you like your nav bar should be always fixed like if i scroll 
your nav bar should not scroll with the page your nav bar should be fixed on the top it's very important because if you make the nav bar scrollable it affects the design very negatively although some websites do that like apple has done that but apple is very different websites you have don't have to do that thing you have to always fix your nav bar for a better user experience yeah on scroll you can change the color of the nav bar like if a user scrolls then you can change the color of the nav bar let me show you an example like notion has done it Notion, wait a minute. Let me go to home. Notion. Like if you see, currently we have a plain nav bar. If I scroll, then they will add a one pixel stroke there to separate it with the other content. You can do that if you required, and you should always add a sign up button or the login sign up button on your main CTA of your website or your landing page in the nav bar because sometimes this button will not be able to get the attention of the user because it's not visible as compared to the heading. The heading is getting all the attention, button is not that much visible. So it's always a good idea to place your primary CTA in the nav bar, and you should always place your logo on the left side because all the websites have their logo on the left. Side. Although some websites have logo in the center, like Dribble have their logo in the center. You can see that they have their logo in the center, but it's not recommended to put your logo in the center because 99% of the websites place their logo on the left, and majority of the time user click on the logo to go back to top. Like if I click here, I will go back to the top. So it's very important that you place your logo in the same place as other websites and in primary cities on the navbar. And these are some properties of navbar. I will see you in next video. Till then, bye.